everyone, this is Charles from Comic Week, and uh, this week we're going to do a little bit something different for our new Comic Book Day video. Uh, as uh, in about four hours, I'm getting on an airplane and I'll be flying to Chicago for the ANA World's Fair of Money, which is one of the largest coin shows in the world. So uh, when we're not doing Comic Week, we're actually publishing Coin Week as well. It's probably the most widely read online source for information about coin collecting. And if you like coins at all, you definitely either probably already know about it, or if you are interested in learning about more about coins, you might want to go check that out. Uh, so here I am in my office uh, making my last minute preparations before I hit the road. But I did want to go over some of the comic books that we're going to be looking for on uh, Wednesday when they come out. Comic books that we either read or we think are uh, important to uh, consider for your collection or if you're a speculator. Um, so I'm going to run through them real quick. This isn't an exhaustive list. Usually when we do the, uh, the videos at Alpha Comics, one of the members of the Alpha Comics staff, they pick selections that they're interested in. And, and I enjoy that back and forth because it's not just my perspective. It's like the perspective of somebody who really reads and like goes into great detail and contemplating about it. And also somebody whose job it is to know about comics and to sell them to the public and has sort of a idea of what collectors or p-readers who come in the shop might be interested in. Uh, this list is in any particular order and it's sort of roughshod because I, I have to do it really quickly. Uh, the first thing is Powers of X2 will be coming out on Wednesday and uh, you know this uh, reboot of the X-Men franchise has been very popular. Uh, fans of the series have well, been kind of longing for a return of prominence of the X-Men franchise. As we know, it's uh, sort of been given the second shrift in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as of late as the Avengers movies and their related uh, franchises have really become the dominant um, uh, blockbuster movie franchise in all of film. So uh, the last uh, X-Men movie with Dark Phoenix came out. It was kind of a, I don't want to use the word bomb, but it, it underperformed. Uh, the Spider-Man uh, Far From Home movie came out and it financially did pre you know, pretty well, but nothing like what the Avengers did or Captain Marvel. Um, so uh, it'll be nice to see the X-Men get back in the, uh, in the books as being a prominent franchise. I think the writing has been really good, although I've been skeptical about the, uh, the lettering. Uh, you may feel the same way, you may not, not carry it, but, uh, but the, the bottom line is it has been a quality uh, quality uh, book, The Powers of X and the House, or no, The Powers of Ten and the House of X. It's hard to keep those straight. Uh, another thing, the second thing I'm looking for is uh, Catwoman. Uh, Catwoman number uh, 14 will be coming out. There's going to be a two issue run where Ram V is writing and one of my favorite artists, Mirka Andolfo, is uh, going to be doing the, uh, the art. Uh, Mirka Andolfo's uh, Unnatural will also come out this week, number 12. That's the final issue in the series. Uh, I'll, I'll be uh, sad to see it go. I actually tweeted to uh, Mirka and I asked her, uh, like, why can't we just have uh, 20 issues of Leslie Blair doing things, <laughs> just random things, because I think a lot of the fans of that series like to see it go on. And she says that she uh, will always hold a, a, a high place in her heart for Leslie, and that if she can come up with a story, she might come back to it. But she does have a new series coming out, and again, Again, she's doing work for, for DC. I think her prominence has uh, definitely, and in, in, in the American comic scene has risen and unnatural, uh, which sells about 16 or 17,000 copies an issue, has a strong following of devoted collectors and uh, myriad um, uh, variant covers that you can collect, store exclusives and whatever. Uh, Jenny uh, Friesen will have a beautiful Wonder Woman cover that's coming out on Wonder Woman number 76. Have not been a fan of the DC dollar upcharge uh, glossy stock covers. They're varying covers they're doing. I love the art, uh, but I think that if they were going to charge extra for a book, I think they should do more than just slap on a uh, glossy cover that's a little bit thicker. I'm not a fan of glossy covers. I sort of like matte covers better. Um, I think, you know, looking at what Image does, sometimes they have heavier uh, stock covers, would have probably been the thing to do, kind of match that quality. I don't understand how Image can put out 
time and time again, great quality <laughs> comics with uh, uh, limited uh, uh, advertising for the same price as the majors. When the majors have, you know, uh, you know, DC has uh, got Warner Brothers and uh, and AT and T, uh, you know, in, involved in its uh, ownership. So I, I do not understand how uh, the monetization um, uh, situation is different, considering that, you know, an economy is a scale. DC sells far more comics per issue. Uh, you have Black Hammer Justice League number two from Dark Horse in DC. Um, I love Black Hammer. I'm probably one of the like, biggest fans of Jeff Lemire's uh, Black Hammer universe. Um, there are many reasons I like it. If you read any of the writing I've done about Black Hammer, you'll see. Um, mainly, I like the continuity from the first issue uh, and all the spinoffs and everything forward. You sort of, it's not convoluted. You can understand it. He's, he's spelled it out very clearly. I like the homages to classic characters from other publishers uh, from different periods of comic book history. Black Hammer Justice League number one did not do it for me. I think it was probably the weakest entry in the series. I know this Black Hammer Justice League was sort of DC's idea. They approached Jeff and uh, he was, you know, I, if I was him, I would take it to an opportunity to add these iconic characters into the Black Hammer storyline. But I felt like the first issue explained things that people who've read Black Hammer, especially from the beginning, already know, you know, about the farm and everything. But it did it in a way that just didn't seem as good as the first time it was told. And then I felt like the art style, the coloring, you know, it was just, it was too cool for me. And, and I, I wasn't really big on it. Now, with Black Hammer Justice League number two coming out, I think some of the uh, variant covers I've seen are just gorgeous. And I, I, I'd like to see what they look like in hand. But, uh, you know, the first the first issue had some, you know, they're okay covers, but a variety of them. But issue two has some really cool covers. Also, we'll see, like, what happens in issue two. Like, if issue one was the setup, which, like I said, retold some stuff I'd already seen, uh, issue two is undoubtedly going to have new material. So, um, cool on issue one. We'll see what issue two has. I'm, I am looking forward to seeing it. I, I have never really been let down by a Jeff Lemire story, so we'll see where that goes. Silver Surfer Black number three. Uh, every issue of Silver Surfer Black that's come out has been a key collector comics uh, key of the week. Um, it's, it's an interesting comic. I don't know how many people have like really bought on to it from the story perspective or like super hardcore Silver Surfer fans, but to me, this series has been so trippy, so interesting. The art has been like over the top, weird, strange. The covers have been just utterly fantastic. I would like to see more of this. I would like to see uh, Marvel go with like just really embracing weird, like comics X kind of comic book styling and just let series be strange and apart and different and, and then integrate those characters into their normal universe and just allow the you know just allow that to be fun silver surfer black has been fun uh and i think donnie uh cates has done a great job with it and, and again the art i can't speak highly enough of it the uh, covers that are coming out this week are just they're sort of like a uh, a, a sherbet explosion of colors uh super trippy and i'm very excited uh, Reaver number two from Image is coming out. Now, Reaver number one was a sort of a key collector comic, uh, uh, comic that had a big spike when it came out. I think, uh, you know, maybe pre-orders weren't sufficient for demand, but I think that that comic sold uh, and spiked uh, on the cover alone. I wasn't completely sold on the storyline, uh, but again, first issues are very difficult. You have 20 some pages to set up something. Uh, but uh, Reaver 2 comes out, another striking cover, uh, not, as, uh, not as approachable to me as the first cover, um, which had this beautiful kind of, kind of creepy female figure on the cover, but uh, we'll see if uh, that series stays hot. Uh, Gogor number four comes out. Um, Diamond's been like kind of talking about like this is the end of a story arc. But then the next issue, number five, is the series finale. I know that the creator was interested in perhaps seeing this go as a long-term comic. He created a big, wonderful world. Uh, it's very interesting. The art style is idiosyncratic. Uh, it took me about two months, uh, so after issue two came out, to say, all right, I'm going to give this a try. So I bought the second issue when it came out, and then I went back. I got the first issue. It's kind of tough to find it, as first issues sometimes can be. But then I was rewarded with a really interesting, nice story that has flown really well. And so going into issue four, you know, it's it's 
One of those things that when you get a comic book a story or creation where you feel like it connects with you emotionally, you start to invest in the characters. So I'm, I'm at that point with this series. I look forward to seeing issue four. I hope it can go on. I just don't know if the sales were high enough to justify the creator continuing on it. We have uh, a couple of uh, number ones uh, coming out in the Marvel Universe. You have Absolute Carnage, Separation, Anxiety, where Riot, uh, Phage, and Agony, uh, and Lasher seek to, to reunite with Carnage. So that's going to be something that's uh, going to come out. Uh, also, there's uh, Absolute Carnage Scream, which is uh, Colin Bunn is writing this. So this is... Uh, you know, major developments for characters tied to Carnage. Of course, the Absolute Carnage came out last week. It was like probably the best comic of the week to come out as far as like just amazing stories, like double size. It was just really, really good. Uh, Marvel's doing a good job with this. Uh, Strayed number one from Dark Horse by Carlos Gifani is coming out. Um, Zadarsky has a two issue oversized series uh, called White Trees uh, from Image that's coming out. And Diamond has. Uh, warned retailers that this uh, series is not for children, so uh, that could mean anything, especially from Chip Zdarsky. Uh, Gwynpool Strikes Back from Marvel is coming out. This is going to be a zany uh, series where uh, basically Gwynpool gets to uh, troll major characters in the Marvel Universe. Uh, the first issue has her trying to reveal the identity of Spider-Man. Um, Once in Future number one is a new Monster Hunter series from uh, Kieran Gillen. Um, this series has a couple of variant covers, including one cover that is limited to one copy per store. So if uh, your comic book uh, shop owner loves you, uh, he may uh, pull that aside for you if you ask. Otherwise, expect to see it selling for probably $30 to $50 in the secondary market on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, then you have uh, Age of Conan Valeria, number one. So that's, a, again, Marvel's been expanding the Conan universe. This is a, a character that's, uh, you know, for from, uh, from, you know, the traditional Conan story. It's kind of a popular character. So we'll see if, uh, if she can carry her own series for a while. And uh, if you missed Immortal Hulk number one, a lot of you did. Um, you know, it was just another Hulk series at that point. But Immortal Hulk number one is a uh, number two, especially. Are hot comics hard to find at retailers? Uh, you won't find them for cover price. Uh, but this week, you will have a chance to get a version of number one, the director's cut Marvel's putting out with uh, extra like art and uh, and sort of backstory about the creation of it. So you will get to uh, enjoy that or experience it anew at a reasonable price. So like uh, you can um, add that to your collection if you're a completionist. Uh, we're going to be giving away and we should have the contest up by the time you see this. This week, we're giving away Deadpool, number one from January 2016 in a CGC 9.8. Uh, last week, we gave away a beautiful Spider-Man. We had over 300 people enter that contest. Um, you know, we uh, enjoy giving these comics away. I plan to give a CGC graded comic away every week forever, uh, as long as we're doing Comic Week. Uh, we've done the same thing for coins. If you uh, like I said, head over to Coin Week. We have a contest there, too. We give away a coin every week. So uh, it's just a way for us to thank the fans because the only thing that, you know, keeps the site going is uh, an audience. The audience gives us the ability to uh, have uh, interactions with industry leaders to get the unfiltered story and be able to parlay that story to you guys. So, again, um, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I will be back. We'll be back at Awful Comics next week. We'll have a, a regular uh, program return. We'll thank everybody then. Uh, right now, I got to uh, get this video online and uh, get my uh, butt to the airport. So I'll see you guys next week. Have a great week. And uh, please, if you haven't already done so, hit that like and subscribe button and uh, be uh, part of the uh, journey that we're on. For Comic Week, I'm Charles Morgan. Until next time. Happy reading.